All righty. Thank you, uh, everybody. And live transcriptions enabled too. So yep. Welcome uh, to the March 15th, 16th uh, metrics model working group. I'm coming over a uh, slight sickness. So if I have <laughs> delays in my brain, <laughs> it's because I'm still, still on the mend just a little bit. So um, I'm going to share my screen. A little slower today. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, we got that. All right. So the first one, um, this is a whoa, this is a metrics model that I think has been coming out of um, out of our from our friends in Asia Pacific. And I, I was kind of taking a look at this um, and have some thoughts, kind of more broadly, that we can look at this along with some of the stuff that Emma had done. Uh, along with our templates, along with the release. So I think all of these things are connected a little bit um, today. So let's just hold off on taking a look at this one for just a second. We're gonna go to um, some of the ones that Emma had put together, which was responsiveness and project safety, I think is what it's being called now at this point. So let's take a look at responsiveness. So Emma, did you wanna say anything towards this or should we just take a second to go through it? You're muted, Emma. Sorry. <laughs> um, maybe I'll just quickly talk to like the format and then the, the main challenge that I um, feel like I'm running into and then you can- Sounds good, okay. So um, I, yeah, I changed um, why you should care to why it matters more it was on the safety side it's like it just felt like the wrong language to talk about safety so um so i've just been using that um and then i put a description this was coming out of the last meeting a little bit where we started talking about how we would have descriptions relevant to the metrics model and the atomic model that might be slightly different depending on which metrics model is a part of anyway so <clears throat> the description i've written it i'm not precious about it um i also started to do user stories. I'm not sure that's what we were quite calling them before, but the reason that I like um, writing out user stories and someone else had suggested this in the chat, so it's not like my idea, um, was um, that when we get to the metrics models, we can say who that audience or user, which users would probably use that particular measurement or tactic. Um, so I wrote out in both the safety and response and if user stories, and then I started to go through, um, so if you scroll down a little bit, I'm more speaking to the format, you can, um, and then I, I started to break it out in the way that I, I felt I could give to a community manager or a maintainer and they'd be like, oh, okay. Um, and that was under like the change request responsiveness, I guess, or issue responsiveness. I'm a little confused what those two are difference, but, um, so that's the main topic. And then like difficulty, I feel like, you know, I was having difficulty trying to go into some of the tactics. So, um, and audience, so the audience speaks to the user story. And I also found as I started to build these out, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, there's another user that could use this. So it actually like just doing this format helped me. Uh, and then description specific to the focus area. So responsiveness, and then, um, so source, I think I was taking from Sean's design, um, which was more like, okay, now how do you go and measure that? And so I, I think I linked to like an auger example, but I, I just wanna say ideally, like these link to ready to go types of things. Like if we're gonna link to say, you know, create a survey, there's like a, survey template or a checklist or something like that. Um, and if we're going to link to a tool like Augur or, you know, internally we're looking at Cloud Mine and Power BI, that there's just, a, you know, you just change a variable or something and then you can see it. Uh, so anyways, that's the format that I have right now. And I apologize, I kind of went on my own journey here, but it was mostly because <laughs> I'm just trying to sell it internally, right? Like I need to be able to not sell it, but it needs to be able to make sense to them. If I just link to a metrics, chaos metrics page, people just kind of glaze over. I want to be able to give them something that they can click on and go do. And I'm not sure that I have that yet, but this is kind of the beginning of what would be useful for me. Anyways. May I, may I comment? 
Mm. Uh, so I like the I like the heading change. Why it matters. Uh, I like that. I like that better. I think that's that's an appropriate change. Uh, in regards to user stories, I've been a I've been a proponent of user stories for a while. I keep on I keep on bringing them up. Uh, however, uh, as much as I like user stories, you I think you you pointed out one of the problems you have with it is as you're writing this, you keep on coming up with more user stories uh, and more more people that maybe this this uh, can connect to. Uh, so I, I it think only that, happened to like, me once, to be honest. <laughs> it was like, oh, Ospo is another audience. So, yeah. So for me, scoping scoping the model is is kind of an issue where we we constantly need to fight to not over scope it. And so so I'm wondering if so I like I like having the user stories, uh, but I, I'm wondering if how we rein that in so that we're not trying to do everything with the user stories or not trying to identify every single type of user uh, that this would be important for. I don't, and then I I don't know that the uh, list is exhaustive so much as it is covering the cases that are important from Emma's perspective. In other words, I'm not contradicting you. I'm saying I think we could spend a day and come up with a hundred user stories for why this matters. <clears throat> right, and I and I am in favor of user stories. As I said, I'm just uh, I just think we have to give some thought to how we scope that. I think that's fair. I think we run into kind of scope things all the time anyway. Like even in our metrics with our objective list, you know what I mean? We could set up a bunch of objectives, but we always kind of keep it scoped to a reasonable presentation. So um, the, what are we, the oh, only challenge I would say to that, sorry, is that, you know, like, honestly, when I look at chaos metrics, or I show them to people, they're like, I don't know how this applies to my work. How what am I supposed to do with this? Um, what's a one like art scale? <laughs> like, people don't know what to do with that. And so I feel like we need to get much more specific to help those folks. I mean, maybe you're right, there could be a hundred different users, but I literally cannot take those and give them to anyone right now as they are. Even ones I've written, like the leadership, like, it's not like a, a chaos thing, but people don't know what to do with it. I think if I've created a checklist or a survey or a query, but so my challenge is, is a little bit back is like how do you help people figure out how to use those if if not through a, a specific lens well i think don't you think this is a little bit what the metrics models are doing just as a first step mm -hmm. to which then we could have whether it's a survey that's available like you pointed out emma or an available or the toolkits or yeah auger or or a blog post that tells a, a narrative story about uh, a model being used in a model and a toolkit being used in context. Uh, maybe we can keep the user stories and with a disclaimer. Some of the stories are these. If you apply it in your context, you can create a pull request or suggest those as a add on to model as it evolves. So maybe we know one or two or three stories we have kept it here as Emma has put in there. And to help the user, maybe there are different perspectives, the same model can be adopted by different users and they can suggest to add their line or like stories they have used it. As a starting thing, we can put a disclaimer. There are some, here are the, some of the examples, user stories. There can be many more which can be added, or if you are using it, adopting it, if you like to add it, we can add it. In this way, those who are adopting it in a new way, they can also contribute it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes sense. I think they can, anybody can add any types of suggestions. So when I look at change request responsiveness, I think there are two kinds of responsiveness people care about. One is how quickly is there a comment or acknowledgement of the change request? And the second is what is the time to close? And perhaps what is the review process? And how does that vary by 
the two key variables I think would be how large is the pull request and whether or not the person making it has already made a contribution to the project. <clears throat> So how, I mean, what I hear from, from Emma is she, like, if we go to the, the metrics PDF at chaos, right. And mm -hmm. she puts that in front of folks at Microsoft, they're like, how do they use it? Yeah. Whatever. This is, um, and so the, like ultimately, and Emma, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but ultimately like when you put, when you put, when you talk about chaos metrics to a group of people, one is they want to agree that, that that measuring this would be helpful in their context, which I think we we've overcome. I, I think we can tell that story. But the second is just tell me how to do it then. Like tell me how to implement it. Like I just I just want to click the thing and <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean I think I think it right now like people are aligned and that chaos is the right place to find the right questions to ask right and there's might be some resources that help you answer it but it's kind of yeah it's like that so so how do i do that and even in just as a, a side note internally um we're thinking uh you know how could we have like a tool like auger and just a spreadsheet that data could come from anywhere, but there's like a header that says, you know, this, 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 and we just feed it in. It could be even inner source type projects and we just feed it into this front end and it gives us something and other people use it and other people are like, oh, I fed this data in and you know, like there's that shared thing. That for us, it would be a win in like to have a repo like that. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm kind of going on a thing, but yes, to what Matt said. <laughs> Uh, may I say something real quick? Yeah. Uh, so I, I see the uh, I see the metrics model as the bridge that gets us from the metrics to the toolkits or the software. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the, the conversation we're having right now is what do we need to put in that bridge that, that gets us to that the the application right the, the practical guidance uh, whether that's Augur software or or a toolkit that tells you exactly how to to to, to measure these ideas right uh, so so i think so this the, is this where the demo site that could show these things becomes important i think so i, th I think we can definitely we could definitely do this in a knowledge base uh, on the website those are two different things i think okay sorry i misunderstood your comment yeah, I think the knowledge base would show these, but then when I click on like this, yeah, this is something else. This is like a, a link to. Yeah, it's the best I could come up with. Is how I describe I know. it. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> but like this would take you to like basically an auger that an auger instance that's online, and you can put in your repo that you care about. Mm -hmm. And you can it would run <laughs> right but, but we also have this model even but we also like, have the go ahead yeah even in the same uh, this working group earlier which uh, sean proposed that we are developing jupyter notebook that can be displayed as a click or add a repo and have all these list of metrics yeah and i think we want to go beyond a jupyter notebook yep so it's sort of readily available and click yeah i think with talking through the notebooks they're they're good for people who are technically comfortable like day in and day out but i think if we just provide the notebooks like honestly i'm not a big tech person if i look at a notebook i'm going to be like <laughs> yeah like now what <laughs> like do i have to install auger and jupiter and yeah I currently had no takers. I'm like, who wants to look under the hood of Augur with me in the next couple of weeks? I had no takers. And I think that's a time thing. Again, like, I think that's the thing we're trying to help people combat. And that's why we're also looking at, like, could we create a Power BI query in custom language where, because people are happy to press click on a query. Like, it's, you know, it's not that it's technical. That's the problem. It's maybe like, ah, it's just, ah. 
but it's great, Sean. Like it, it's still like people re- when you show it to them, they're like, yes. But yeah. then when you like leave them in a room alone with it, <laughs> it's like, ah. Kind of thing. Well, so, so what, what are the, what is the purpose of the toolkit? Because I thought the purpose of the toolkit was to basically provide guidance for those situations where Augur software or Remore Lab uh, doesn't provide the answer, right? The toolkit could help you uh, create a survey to answer these the, the, the questions that you have, or the tool could, could point you towards uh, uh, a, a Jupyter notebook, for example, if, uh, if that particular model doesn't exist in Augur. Uh, is, am I wrong in, in thinking that a, the, the toolkit would be at that level or so I think I think what we're looking for is a way to actually not have people have to mess with any of the back endy stuff where they would just have a page where they could log into an auger account or basically a chaos account that could take them to the auger or more lab implementation for their repos like that's that's I think what people are looking for but but auger can't really do a whole lot for the the DEI metrics no, uh, no, for... in, the, in those certainly, yes, right. In those cases where you can't get it from trace data, it really is a process very similar to the way that the DEI metrics are designed. And that's where the toolkit would come in, right? The, if my safety, the yes, safety yes. one I worked on? Oops. That is the toolkit, I believe. Okay, so so I think that still holds up with what I said, the the... The metrics models that we're working on are the bridge, the bridge between the metrics and the toolkits or the Augur software. Right, so so the, the question then becomes, what do we need in the metrics model that, that can act as that bridge between? What needs to be there? Do we need to have toolkit so functionality in the model? I mean, so for, for example, I think the, the toolkit could include, for example, if it involves a survey or other kinds of instruments, then it could include examples that people could then use to deploy in their own survey tool. I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think of that? I'm getting a little stuck on language. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Of course, like, no, no, not your fault. No, like talking about the bridge with the metrics in the toolkit. Um, I don't think, yeah. I, I've ahead. kind of written these like I'd imagine to be a toolkit, um, or like, what is a toolkit? It's a it's a, a group of tactics of measurements and tactics, something like that. I think we should define what a toolkit is. <laughs> I don't want to over bike to stuff, but um, I, I like in the safety in the safety metric, I have like a lot of qualitative type things. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do something. The toolkit will list all those things. Some of them might be easy, right? That's why I have like the difficulty. Some of them might be, you have to spin up an augurist instance. Some of them might be, you have to run a survey. Some of them might be, oh, you click this link and change the thing. It's all the different ways you could approach something. That for me, that's the toolkit. And each of these boxes is like a <laughs> instantiation of a toolkit tool? for a given thing. I don't know. A tool, <laughs> a tool in the toolkit. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We need to have another project for lang all the language that we're building. <laughs> for me, toolkit is a way of saying I cannot derive it from trace data. And so I need hmm. other kinds of things to get the data I need to express this metric. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that's not how I saw a toolkit. I saw it. Okay. Well, I saw a toolkit as you could get it from trace data or you could mm -hmm. get it from a survey. Yeah. It doesn't okay. have to be. It doesn't have to be just trace data. So the toolkit, and if I'm looking at this is project safety, if I'm looking at the toolkit, it's basically all of these boxes. Mm -hmm. This is the toolkit all the way down to. Yeah. Down, okay. down and down maybe to, even a little more information, like maybe maybe uh, a survey that's been developed to help. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. And that would be in one of the tools. I think source is the wrong word, <laughs> not to get into be word, but it's like all the different ways you can do it. Like there's a survey you could run, there's a auger inst. Yeah, that's, but I think that's more why maybe that's what's confusing. 
Okay. Right, because sometimes it could just, if it is, but then so I kind of have a funny question. So let's say that if I look at responsiveness, this one here, Sean, could you're really loud on typing? Sorry. Um, <laughs> on issue responsiveness, or wait, on just responsiveness, we have change request responsiveness, issue responsiveness, discussion form. Okay, so all of those are things that can be measured from Augur, right? Mm -hmm. So in theory, we could have like ways to measure. And this, oops, this would take you. Mm -hmm. You know, because I kept coming and my other in the safety one, I kept coming across things like psychological safety and I'm like, oh, Augur doesn't do some evaluation of sentiment. And I felt like there was there were tool kind of things that we could use as well. Yeah. But I didn't know where to what that would be. Yeah, so I think, yeah, so I think that's kind of related to my that was going to be my second point. So we have like Augur could do this entire metric model or this entire toolkit, these each one of these, right? But for project safety, Augur cannot do all of these. A lot of them are, so I put source survey questions in that one example, but what I meant was go, what we need is a, is a survey version of that metric. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so, so I just made stuff up as I went along, sorry. No, 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 that's, <laughs> but so like if we, I'm thinking like, okay, pretend like at Microsoft, like you showed somebody this and you're like, no, like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then you're like, here are the metrics that comprise this. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's super cool too. And mm -hmm. you're like, click on that button and it's gonna take you to the Augur instance and you just put in your repos mm -hmm. and they'd be like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this one made sense to me. Project safety is a little bit harder because yeah. you're like, well, this one, you have to run a survey over here you have to run a different survey over here, or it could be a second part of that same survey. Yeah, I think that's probably true. But again, like that might not be clear at first. But is that is that okay in one of these, like from your perspective, if we were at Microsoft and you're like, so this here's this metric model and to get this data, you need to in part run a survey, in part go to Augur, in part, whatever, do something else. Like, does that, does that get to be too tenuous of an ask for people, do you think? I think it, the asking them to process, like, so I think there's a couple different survey, like based on different things to ask people to look through all the different, to process it all. And then themselves come up with the, aha, I will create one survey for this. Mm -hmm. it, you know, would probably be an ask, but I think if we were to have sort of example pages or example surveys that mm -hmm. people could grab from and 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 there's just some direction like wherever there's just you know some direction that's like make you know build a bear or something kind of thing i don't yep. know for, i think that would be it. it's all about examples things people can grab and do without having to think too too much okay um kevin or vinod or Sean? i have a thought so uh, this is where the toolkit was uh, discussed like, okay, we have a survey, we have a trace data. How to like operationalize it is where the toolkit was like, okay, uh, you have three metrics, two metrics data can be collected through this way. And for fourth, you have to do a survey for a survey sample question, you can find them. In. This is what the toolkit was trying to do, it, I guess. So maybe we can merge it over here and say how to collect the data or analyze it as a separate section rather than within each individual section. Or we have a, each individual and we can collectively say two data can be obtained through chaos. One can be collected through survey and in totality, this will develop this model. So you're saying like in, in any one of these models, but there can be in part. Hey, Sean, can you mute for a second? Sure. Yeah, sorry. 
so for any one of these toolkits like we would have like impart stuff that could be collected via auger right yep and then parts that can be collected via surveys yes this yeah is i think that's fine and i just wanted to make sure when i was asking emma that that's not too big of an ask for a reader no and i i think i think again if it's more like at a high level there are two different types ways that we will suggest or you know like at a high level people are like there's two two ways that i'll be asked you know one of those ways is a survey and there's examples of those the other one is is a systems link and there's a, a link to that right there might be the only thing is i might have broken that idea a little bit with the ospo one because for ospo for compliance with the code of conduct we have like a script <laughs> so that you run using the but okay. that's not important I it's just where that there might that. be a third yeah. wait what's the script they run um i think i saw your comment on that in here i can't remember if i actually linked it or not i don't think you linked it i think you just had like a comment something about codes of conduct this no inclusive leadership Ospo. um yeah a number of things Is there, there. two questions <laughs> I, don't know. I made myself do a lot of this over a short period of time so i'm sorry <laughs> it's not very that's okay. This is a really good conversation. So, I mean, part of part of this could be, I mean, I, so part of this could be like source. So this is, again, instead of source, this would be like ways. Oops, I got rid of your comment. Ways to measure, right? Um, and if we could present this, where did you get these questions, Emma? Um, remember? governance do you, oh, this is actually kind of, this is a new thing. Oh. This is a Emma also building a new metric for, um, I will say though that, that the code of conduct I, I think there's some outdatedness in some of the stuff as well. So this might be a chance to update them. Yeah, code of update conduct. Them. We are actually updating the code of conduct metric. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think we have a governance metric also. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just what came up um, for me as I was oh. writing this. Uh... Okay. Well, I think one of the things to do is, is perhaps for some of these metrics that are in the toolkit is to simply go see if we already have an existing um, set of survey questions because oftentimes we do yeah that's what i was going to say like um i think in when we were developing metrics that include a survey the we just gave sample questions because i think the conversation was that we actually didn't want to provide a sample um, for a couple of reasons, one being we didn't want people to just brainlessly do it like we wanted them to be mindful in the way that they craft a survey specific to their communities. So like we wanted to make sure that they were thinking about what they were doing, essentially, especially with regard to DEI. Um, we didn't want them just, you know, just almost making it too easy for them <laughs> and not putting any thought behind it. Um, and then the second thing was, I think that because it those that survey is going to be so tailored to an individual's community that it's really hard to have just a blanket um, survey that they would use because not all the questions are going to apply so they're going to need to um, have some kind of intervention where they kind of check off the questions and make sure that they apply and that they're you know that they want to ask those but that being said uh, i think it might there might be an extra i know we're having a hard time trying to decide at what, like how far we handhold people. Cause I think that's really our challenge here is, is how far are we taking this or how, you know? And so um, I think what we might do is uh, for each of these individual toolkits, they would kind of be static, I, I think. And someone correct me if I'm wrong. So like for each metric, there is a toolkit and it's pretty static and it kind of goes with the metric. And then that block gets plopped into different metric models as needed. But what we might insert is like an extra layer. Like if, if you scroll up to the top, 
Matt? So like on, on this, why it matters, user stories, all this stuff, maybe that's the layer in which we provide a resource that pulls those toolkits together as, and I think Emma touched on it before when she said, here are the things you're gonna need to implement this metric model. You're gonna need an instance of Augur, you're gonna need some kind of survey building tool. And maybe here's an example survey that we provide them that kind of pulls bits and pieces from, if we wanna provide a sample survey, maybe we provide one survey for this metric model that pulls bits and pieces from those chunks that need surveys. And then here's the stuff you're gonna pull from Augur. And here's a list of all the things that you're gonna, the trace data that you're gonna pull from Augur. And so like, it's at that like higher level, instead of having them go through each toolkit, there's like a, a guide that's like an umbrella. Is that, does that make sense at all? I'm trying to capture it right here. Do you see that? We need a whiteboard. Yes, yes. I think that would be super helpful. And so, so what was the interview here? team? I don't know, I just made that up. Like, oh, I'm just okay. trying to think of like different ways that you might collect data. Like you mm -hmm. might need an instance of Augur or Grimoire Lab, you might need a survey tool, you might need to do interviews, you might, whatever, whatever other ways are to collect data. And we could tailor it specific to that model so that somebody could look at the metric model and say, okay, it's gonna take me overall, it's gonna take me 30 hours to implement this metrics model. And here are the different blocks and here's how long each one's gonna take. And then I can decide, am I gonna do all of these? Am I gonna do some of these? What pertains to me? What do I particularly care about? Like, I think having a higher level that allows somebody to have that, uh, that kind of bird's eye view of it would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what do other people think of that? I like that a lot. It gives you a, it locates you as to what you'll need. And then again, if we wanted to do a sample, as an Emma said, you know, just to make it easier for people, well, then we could maybe provide an example that has those different things all wrapped in one survey and say, here's the example. This survey goes with this metrics model. And it's a compilation of these three survey based metrics. I have a one comment. We are uh, you putting these in the blowouts. If you scroll down in the individual metric, yes, here like sources or ways to do it. And then we are here are the things. I think we, uh, uh, we uh, as a group should decide like should we keep it as an individual metric level or as a collective entire model level like we can show it either way but maybe individual level okay here's the metric here's how you collect the data uh, maybe through trace data or be through survey or we show it at the end or uh, uh, after showing metrics here is the way you need uh, to do it, uh, to collect the entire data and look at it. That's an interesting question. I don't know how to answer it right off because right now it is metric by metric. Yes. And, and within, I, I, sorry. Yeah. So sorry. Good. I was saying like within each we have individual ways to collect or we have a collective way to for the entire model. I don't know the question but when i was writing this i i wrote the description for each as it pertained to the is safety is the a, the metric model right <laughs> sorry hey that is um, yes i believe somewhere along the line that yeah. is the metric <laughs> so model when i wrote the, the description i would write like how how like inclusive leadership you know applied to project safety how Govern, like how that applied to that specific thing, but it might apply differently. Like if there was a recognition thing at some point, like how you talk about leadership, it would be different description and maybe anyways, I just wanna say that that's how I was thinking of it, whether that answers your question or not, I don't know. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think we can, there's a way to uh, do it collectively. I think we do actually have mm. to look at it individually the way that Emma has kind of laid the it out. It, the way that it is here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I, the, I'm sorry. Do you think the collectiveness kind of gets taken up here? You know what I mean? Well, the collectiveness is the the model or the toolkit, right? 
So okay. the the whole of the the whole of this document. Okay. Uh, but the uh, the individual data points, the surveys, or the tools. I think you have to you have to look at those individually. Uh, just as a as a practical <laughs> as a practical thing. Yeah. Then then we don't need here are the things you need because that is already defined within each metric. Mm, I think when I was hearing like Elizabeth's comment, it was just it was it, it was early, like setting the stage. Mm -hmm. Like here why it matters, here are the people who would care, and here are the things you're gonna need. Now let's get into the details. Okay. You know and, your recipe. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. You're gonna need flour. That kind of yeah, thing. probably you'll need flour. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. it's like pre preparing the audience earlier that okay, you need this 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 package or this this survey tool. Now dive into deep how to do it. Right. I mean, like somebody might look at a metrics model and see that they have to do. We recommend they do twenty interviews and run two surveys, and they might be like, "Yeah, I just I'm not doing that." Yeah. You know, which is the MVP, fair. the MVP thing though too, like what is the minimum or what is the yeah. first thing you do as well? Because, you know, what is the first thing? I almost think of like, I don't know the answer again, with like what is the hello world version of some of this stuff, right? Where well, someone gets it working, they test it, they feel like, oh, okay, I know how to run this tool or I know how to like do that thing and then they grow. And wouldn't it be cool, a side note, that people actually start to understand the format and then get contributions? It's like, oh, this is how I did it. And this is, you know, that would be cool. Yeah. It, this reminds me so much of when we were coming up with the metric templates itself themselves. <laughs> we, we went through so many iterations of just what the metrics should even look like. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we settled on it, you're right. I mean, people could start contributing to them pretty easily. But it, it's funny how long it takes sometimes just to get the template set. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emma, to your point, I had the same thought when I was doing the DEI um, badging toolkit, because there are things in there that are like the baseline. You absolutely have to have a code of conduct. You absolutely, yeah. you know, but there's no way to indicate that. It, it's just kind of all like, here are all these things you can do. Totally. But I think that that would be a really crucial piece of what we're building here is like, here is the absolute you must have. Like, if you're going to do anything with this, you absolutely have to have this. And then these are nice to have. Yeah. So I started like trying to play with difficulty, which obviously doesn't apply if there's a bunch of different things you can do, but then it, it, maybe it's all like foundational or something like that, or at, lots, all the attributes might be helpful. And that's what I hear too, is people just want like, what is the baseline? How do I, I want to start building on something. Right. Okay, so um, what did you say? Foundation? Whoops, foundational. Yeah, or like level one, or how whatever makes sense. Okay, yeah, that doesn't look great. And that piece would be would be tailored to the model, not the metric toolkit. Correct. Yep. Okay. So for this model. If you want to understand responsiveness, I would say all three of these are probably critically important. Because we only have three. So maybe they're all green. You know. Or level one. Okay. Um <clears throat> what are some other thoughts that people have we're we're approaching the end of our time i have one more comment like uh, on the foundation level and difficulty uh they both seem similar like uh, are they critical and the medium or critical and important or oh no they're they're different so like in the case of a code of conduct when Elizabeth was talking about the DEI badging metric model, like code of conduct, if you're gonna if you're gonna approach this model, you just have to have a code of conduct. And if you don't, that's just silly. Like that's just this part of this model. That's something you have to take a look at. Um, I think sil silly should be a metric outcome. 
<laughs> yes, degree of silliness is actually a metric that we. Yep. For me, I'm having a hard time like making it concrete and creating a roadmap for how this may or may not relate to some of the public presentations of metric models that we discussed last time. So what's the what's the deal? What's the problem? Well, just I'm I'm because there's parts of things, and so I'm. Do we is are we still talking about making the measurable metric parts part of a hosted? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so there. the I think one of the so like this one, Sean, like responsiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whole That's model. Clear. That's clear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Other ones, I think we'd have to sort out like some of them, like this one. Like psychological safety. You can't, you can't do this. No, entirely. no, I can't, I can't do that with metrics. No. Unless it looks for the absence of anthrax in the development stream. So some will be like 100% auger, but probably more often than not, there'll be some percentage auger. Yeah. And you'll just have to, like, you'll have to understand which one of these are augurable. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Kevin, did you have a comment? You were unmuted there. Oh, yeah, I was going to say something earlier, and oh, I, uh, I didn't want to interrupt, so I was just quiet. Uh, generally, uh, my my general feedback on this is I I, I love I love the uh, the way it's going. I, I love the discussion. I love the uh, the inclusion of uh, toolkits in the uh, metrics models. And uh, and user stories in metrics models. Uh, however, I would and so I I love it, but I am going to take us back in time, and and uh, remind us that we uh, at one point we were thinking that simplicity in the metrics models would be advantageous. Uh, so we we had thought of the the toolkits as almost a uh, a third document. And I'm I'm completely fine making these metrics models kind of all encompassing and, and including the uh, toolkits in the metrics models, but I just want to I just want to remind you that we've had that discussion in the past. Uh, so I don't know if people's minds have been changed or. Uh, I'll just speak for the work here in front of you, and I agree that that it was a third document and that I have muddied the waters here by blending them both. And I apologize. I don't think I feel strongly either way, but I, I was just trying to get something in that I, yeah, so I apologize. I still think that. Well, I, I love it. And I think the, uh, the, what you've proposed here, I think is, is very viable. And I, I think it would make a very useful document. So if, uh, if everyone thinks this is the way to go, I would, I'm plus one. All, all on board. I think it's the way to go. I know that we had talked about simplicity, um, but I, I feel like at this point, putting it together is probably actually simpler than maintaining a different document, which is called toolkit. So we'd have a, the metrics, the metrics models and the toolkits. I think bringing it all together here makes more sense to me. Yep, I'll second that. Third. All right. Then, so, then I think we've landed on a, a, yeah. a pretty good template, I think. So let me um let me propose this before the next meeting. Maybe I could try to take a run at cleaning some of this up, just in terms of the conversation that we've had here today. Um and bring it back in a couple of weeks if that works for people. That sounds fantastic, Matt. Like right. Let's see. Two we weeks go. will be the two weeks will be the 29th, Matt. Oh yeah, I won't be here. Yeah, neither of but us I can, will be here. <laughs> Elizabeth, I can hand it off to you. Like I can do some of the work, but maybe you could present it. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> or or um, or Kevin or Vinod. We can, it'll Just, be a joint meeting. I mean, it'll be a team team effort. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I had a quick question uh, before we go. Is there anybody here that will be at the community meeting on Tuesday next week and will, will. would be willing to give a 
I've already agreed to do it. Oh, you did. Okay, good. Awesome. Right on. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. All right. Hey, thanks everybody. Really Bye. appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you.